start this. This is about how to pass Delta. Really, it's a little bit about what is Delta for those of you who haven't fully got your heads around that yet. Um, and it's also about what you can do really before you get started with Delta or during particular modules, plans, strategies, ideas. If you don't know me, if you haven't seen me before, my name's Sally and I run the Delta modules for ITI. Um, I taught language for 25 years and I've been working with teachers who are working on getting their Delta for about 20 years. And before you add that up and decide I'm ancient, I, for quite a while that I did those in parallel, not one after the other. Now, what I have done is pre-recorded some little bits of this webinar. So I'm planning to mix it up, play you some of my ideas I pre-recorded earlier today, and then we'll get you to ask questions. And I've divided things up into sections. So there'll be a bit of talk from me, I hope, if I can make this work, it's pre-recorded, then some live question and answer, and then another bit of talk, and we'll continue in that way. So let me try and make this work. I'm entirely immersed in Delta, and I'm very happy to be so, because I find it endlessly interesting. And I think that's the trick to passing it as well. If you're interested in language, interested in teaching and what you're trying to do, and interested in your students, it all becomes less stressful and more engaging. I'm going to break this webinar up into five sections. Joanne, who's in here somewhere, is going to help me filter questions from the chat box. So we can pick out one or two things that seem relevant to each section and answer you. If we choose your question, we'll get you to ask it again so everyone hears it. So if you write questions into the chat box as we go along, do listen out for your name. Uh, so the sections are the, and a quick overview of what Delta involves, some general things you could do before Delta, some things that might help with module one, some things that will help with the practical teaching, so that's largely module two, and then some things that will help with the writing, so that becomes module two and module three. A lot of the teachers we work with say that Delta is the most difficult thing they ever do it. So why do it? And it was really productive. I learned so much. I mean, I built this great fundament and I keep learning. It's not that, I mean, I learned everything. I'm still learning. It's been four years now, but when I like think of that experience, it was um, really beneficial. I think it's been rather more than four years now since Balada completed. Uh, but if we talk to a lot of teachers, most teachers about the Delta experience, they will talk in similar terms. It's the thing that comes up most often, how much they learn and how long that effect lasts. How many years later they're still realizing things are coming back into their practice, finally sitting in place for them and becoming useful. Um, and asking them a year or two after is probably the, most, the better way to go. If you ask someone, they're right in the middle of a module, they um, can be a bit more stressed out and less uh, positive about things uh, than that. But the main message that's coming across it, I think, um, is that Delta is a big undertaking. Well, you, you have to remember it is manageable. Lots of people have passed. Because I knew I was going to do this webinar, I looked the numbers up. And it turns out that uh, 350, 350 people working with us have managed to get through the exam, about 400 have managed to get through module two, and about 300 through module three. And that's since the Delta went modular, which would have been late 2008. And we're just one center. We are a big center, but we're just one center. So there are other places in the world getting people through it as well. Um, so it's manageable, you can do this. It's about organizing your life and keeping going and putting the time in. 
that would be my next point. There are no quick solutions. There really aren't. Um, this often comes up most at the beginning of module one where people are looking for the one book that works and there isn't one. Or the list of answers that they have to memorize that will solve all their problems for task three or whatever it is they're focused on. There aren't quick solutions. There I wish there were. If there were, we would promote the best advert for a centre is the number of people who manage to uh, complete successfully and happily with them. And so if there's anything to help in any way whatsoever, I would be promoting it. We promote lots of things. We give you lots of ideas of what you can do. Um, I have to I have to admit, most of them aren't quick. But you can plan ahead. You can invest time now to make the delta experience much faster more efficient and less stressful for yourself um and how you can do that that that's what's going to come up in the next sections in this webinar but the single biggest thing that i would say is you have to make time for this um it's Everyone who starts a Delta with us is, comp is capable of completing it, but there is quite a high dropout rate. And then usually the reason is not Delta at all. It's the fact that they started with unrealistic expectations. They're already teaching a 45 hour week, trying to run a department with family commitments and other things that, and the, the days are so full. Um, there is no room for them to do this well. You are looking at, even if you're really quite delta ready, you're probably looking at putting aside 10 or 15 hours a week uh, over the space of an exam course to get through module one and something similar, if not greater, for the other two modules. Um, and it could be considerably more for someone who's coming from a background that doesn't make them already very much ready to do this. So make time, that's the biggest thing. Have a sensible idea about when and how you can study. One, forget your social life, there's no time for that. Just in case any of you aren't clear about this, there are three modules. Um, let me show you the setup so module one is an exam that's two 90 minute papers and it's always held twice a year it's always the first wednesday in june um, or the first wednesday in december module two is the teaching practice so somebody will watch you teach lessons but they have quite big technical lesson plans in place and you also have to write background assignments which set out the underlying theory and thinking behind what you're doing <clears throat> module three is an extended assignment. That's a case study, um, either on course design for a particular group or on a management issue within your LTO. So, um, in module one, the thing that's key is um, learning to find sources, learning what's credible and not credible academically. Uh, organizing your ideas, being able to um, compare and contrast things, and being able to analyze ideas, and increasing your general range of knowledge. In module two, what becomes important is the practical teaching. You also need to be able to deal with academic writing, but for most people, I think the most prominent feature of module two is the actual teaching. In module three, academic writing becomes a thing in itself, and you also need data collection skills there to be successful. The overall aim of Delta is that by the end of the course, you should have become, if you're not already, um, a fully reflective, self-directive teacher who is constantly curious about what you're doing, interested in improving what you're doing in any way. When I get to the end of this webinar, I also think, ah, if I just change, it would be better. To be always thinking like that about everything that you do in the classroom and to encourage others to think in the same way. That's the aim, if Delta goes well. If you work in places that provide workshops, encourage peer observation, set up regular development 
developmental in-house observations. Uh, and generally you seem interested in all things ELT, then doing delta without a CELTA is feasible. A CELTA isn't a requirement, but if you're actually in a context where you get very little input and support, we strongly recommend doing a CELTA before delta. It helps you to deal with some of the initial practical aspects a little bit. And we would also recommend doing CELTA and then waiting for a couple of years for that knowledge and learning to sit firmly in what you're doing before you move on to DELTA. Okay, so that's the first overview of what it's about. I'm, I'm going to look at what you can do generally before and then one and then teaching and writing. But before we go there, has anyone got a question at this point? Christina, I saw you writing something in the chat box. Do you want to talk to us? You need to unmute yourself. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. So good to see you. So many familiar faces. So, um, yeah, my question is like I'm multitasking and probably there are lots of people like me multitasking, teaching and, you know, doing all sorts of other courses. You don't so put on your is there, is, is, is there, I don't know, an advice on, on which, which is the first priority for each of the modules? So yeah, I know time, I know, I know time. Okay, we need to, yeah, we need to study. Time but is the biggest problem for all of the modules. Yeah. What, what module are you doing right? You've done one with us, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I stood the exam in, in July. I don't know what the result will be like. Well, anyway, so I'm preparing to, <laughs> I don't know, maybe retake the exam. And I signed up for module three. And uh, Joanne, Joanne is here. Hi, Joanne. Um, she, yeah, she enrolled me, but to be honest, I didn't have the time to enroll in the course yet. I, I, I bought the books. Uh, I have a, I had a friend who came from the UK, luckily, so she brought me uh, like two course books because I can't buy them from Turkey. And um, yeah, I need time. Um, th this is the biggest thing. I think with time management, it is worth looking around at some of the websites and ideas about time management yeah. itself. I, for example, in my life, I remember one thing that changed for me. At one stage when I was trying to do lots of different things, I used to wait for empty days. I used to think I'll work on that when I've got a free morning or a free afternoon. And then as my life slowly got busier and busier, I got to the point where I stopped thinking like that. And it was kind of, how can I force this into 10 minute sections that I can fit <clears throat> into places? rather than waiting for stretches of time because um i find you almost never get stretches of time anymore they things get interrupted a lot but planning time time management and planning there are some interesting people out there for example there's a guy called um cal newport who has a blog called um i can't remember the name of the blog but he talks about deep work and building time in and breaking tasks up you can find blogs like that it sounds as though your problem isn't the study skills, it is literally the time management. And that is in itself a whole other thing. Yeah. Okay, but I think you're, absolutely, you're putting your finger on what is core for many people to where the problems come. It's not that they can't do the course. It's not that they, would, <clears throat> they actually would like to do it. And they enjoy the course, but the time, managing time is hugely difficult. I think it becomes more and more true for all those. Right, I'm going to play <clears throat> a bit now that's shorter. You may be to hear, and this bit's about things you can do in if you're between, if you if you haven't yet started doing any modules, there are some very general things you can do that would help with any of them. So that's what this part's about. Again, while you're listening, if you think of questions that connect to this as Christina did, write in the chat box and we'll try and, and track them and call on you and, uh, and go backwards and forwards with some, some of them in the next bit. Okay, here you go. This is the overview coming. If you have done a CELTA and aren't sure if you're ready for DELTA yet or not, or if you haven't done a CELTA but you're determined to do DELTA without one, 
then think about doing things that would help you increase your knowledge base, uh, both to help in the exam and in the written elements, and also to make you more aware of your practice, what you're doing in the classroom, because that will help you a lot with module two. Teaching in different contexts, and by that I mean, for example, teaching business students or uh, children or any university program, would add to your ideas about what's possible. So would teaching different levels or different course books, because all of this adds to the range of materials and task types and general approaches that you're likely to draw on. So volunteer to move levels or pilot materials or books. Watching others teach and being watched themselves makes us much more aware of what's possible. Why not set up a peer coaching scheme in your school? Even if only one other person joined in, you get some feedback from each other. You'd also get used to having someone in your classroom sometimes, and that can take the edge off the stress of first being observed. If the logistics of this are hard because of timetables, could you record part, lesson, whole lessons or parts of lessons and then swap recordings and give feedback that way? Or even um, just swap lesson plans and get some kind of peer critique. The other side of things from the practical side is to increase your background knowledge. Um, so what's the name of the last book you read on ELT of some kind? What blogs do you follow? When did you last attend or deliver a workshop in your school? Um, if you haven't got good answers to those questions, you should be starting your reading habit now because that's what will really help you in the long term. Start a reading journal. Track what you found and where you found it and what you thought when you read it. Keep lists. If you read things and you want to find them again, it's easiest if you've written things down about it in, in something searchable. So, for example, Evernote or GDocs. Mark time in your diary every week to do this. You could think about using half an hour a day or maybe one morning a week. If you haven't done much of this kind of thing before, I've put some practical ideas up on a Weebly site um, that you can access. I have linked in the slide that's coming. Be warned that I'm still working on some of the pages, but quite a few of the pages already have useful ideas and links. If you find it hard to motivate yourself, think about starting a book club with some friends or a journal article club just at lunch, lunchtime at work. Get together online or once a week and talk about the chapter or article you've just read. This system we use in the ITI in the book club and it makes me read more systematically. So um, to round that up, pre-Delta, be proactive about increasing your knowledge, read and track that reading, Watch and be watched, formally or informally. Volunteer for things that will push you to do research, so do an in-house workshop, design a new course. And start trying to write about and talk about your ideas, to find your voice. Write, your, write for websites, publish lesson plans, share, give feedback. You need to find an ELT voice in the same way that your learners need to find their English voice. It's no good just being doing receptive activities, being passive. You need to do proactive things that force you to use the knowledge you're collecting. That was my idea about things you could generally do before any module or for all the modules, if you're between CELTA and DELTA, assuming that there is a between for you. Now, um, there were a couple of sensible looking questions in the chat box. Um, somebody said, uh, I don't know what your name is. Whoever's using the Hawaii Mate Pro <laughs> 20. <laughs> Have you found out a name, Joanne? Who is that? Can I'm I? I'm not sure. Somebody was asking about online companions. Who's using Hawaii Mate Pro 20 rather than their name? Okay, well. 
they've, they've stopped listening, I guess. Um, what they've asked is, can I take Delta online? And um, of the three modules, it depends which center you do it with. If you do, some centers only do face-to-face -face modules, some centers do online as well. But with us, we are used to, and mostly these days, deliver our module one and our module three fully online. With module two, we are accredited to deliver module two online, but it's more complicated doing it that way. I think we should come back to that question when we look at module two in particular. Um, it's, it's feasible, but not easy to do that way. Okay, but we can do it. But module one and three, um, when I first started doing this, we just had face-to-face -face groups in 2008, and we very quickly started to try and provide online resources. But these days, um, there's a, a many, many more people doing it fully online and only a few people who ever come to the face-to-face -face parts of courses. So that was one of the questions that came up. Um, so yes, uh, Reza, you can blend, you can choose. We normally run face-to-face -face, um, versions of input in ITI for one and three. Uh, we weren't able to in March because uh, the rest of you were uh, um, limited by COVID. Uh, so what we ended up doing was learning to run synchronous sessions in Zoom for that as well. And we found they're very popular. So we're going to keep both elements in from here on because um, they worked well for people. Uh, as I say, with module two, it's more complex, but it is feasible to do it fully online with us. Right, other questions that were in there for one second. Um, Razi had a question. Razi, would you like to ask your question? Razi? Hello, you had a question uh, yeah. about the order of the modules. Well, Actually, I asked my questions that uh, are we supposed to uh, pass the modules respectively? I mean, sequentially? No, not necessarily. Um, we strongly recommend, and I suspect I'll tell you this in the next bit, we strongly recommend you start studying for module one first. But quite often, for example, if you signed up for our September course, it's designed to get you ready to do the December exam. And quite a lot of people would do all that studying. And the, the fact of doing the studying helps you build your background knowledge. And then the, our December module, our module two course starts in early December. So you won't know the exam results. Some people start the module two course because the idea is that you've done the studying, not necessarily that you have the results. Now, if, if everything goes well, you then also turn out to have passed the exam when the results come later on. But for some people, they don't. And for some people, that's not too much of a problem because they carry on, they finish module two, and they pass that, and then maybe even do module three, and then go back to the exam. But all of the modules feed into each other. So you don't have to complete them, them sequentially, but we suggest an order. Uh, but you don't have to wait until you pass one. But if someone seems to be struggling with a module, we would recommend maybe they took a bit more time. Does that help? Rosie? Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, have we got anything else? Good there, were, there were a couple of questions from Moss, Sen and Gamza about resources and reading to prepare. Mohsen, do you want to speak? Hello? Can I hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, yes. Hello, and I hope you're doing well. Um, I've got a question about uh, the resources of uh, uh, background knowledge uh, about Delta. And uh, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd like to ask, uh, what are the best resources uh, to broaden our uh, background knowledge before taking Delta? Uh, that's, that's a huge question. I think yes, certainly I, I would, think I would recommend going question. to yes. the Weebly site link. As far as I understand, when we're finished in the next couple of days, Sahan will share this recording and my PowerPoints so that you'll be able to access the links I had in on the screen. And the link on that screen to the Weebly site, I've written down 
um, websites and names of books that I think would be useful because if I start to list now I could be listing for some time okay and yeah. that is the big thing about Delta I think for those of you who have done Delta it's significantly different in the amount you need to read there is not one book you need a pile of books for each module and there will likely be a different pile of books for each module or also you need to get you need to hone your online research skills so that you can pull up articles and websites and work out which of those are valid, which ones would have enough weight to be used in an academic essay, for example. But again, that's part of what you would do in module two and three. And it's what module one helps you get used to and get a feel for. Okay, should we... Yeah, shall we shall we go to module one, do you think, Joanne? And then and then do a few more. Keep your eye on the questions. Let there are three modules and if an employer says they want out, so they usually want all three. Uh, just to remind you, one is the exam, two is the practical teaching component, and three is the extended assignment. We strongly recommend doing one first that one is designed to help you build background knowledge and an, an awareness of what resources there, there are, which writers talk about which topics, who to go to when you need to know about something, which area, which websites, which institutions. But after number one, if you follow that by doing number two, then number three, or number three, then number two, depends on a lot of other factors. Um, we're thinking specifically about one. It's a written exam and it expects you to be able to look at authentic text, classroom tasks, course book materials, and even assessment and to comment on things within that. That can be the language that's being used, the grammar, lexis, phonology, or discourse. It could be the subskills and strategies that will be involved in dealing with that language. It could be about teaching those things or what students are likely to do to cope with those things. Delta is a proficiency exam in the sense that there is no fixed list of things to learn that you can then automatically write down in the test. They intend to make you look at new things and analyze them on the spot using your background knowledge of systems, skills, and methodology and they expect you to say something about them, it will be something new. They don't repeat old tasks. So the shape of the task and the skills required to deal with it will always be similar, but the answers will always be new. So, therefore, how to study for it? Well, I'd say join a course. But of course I'd say that because I've spent years and years building one, adding to it and improving it. But whether you join the course or not, the single biggest thing you need to do is read. Stephen King was once asked, I guess he's often asked, about how to become a successful writer. And his answer was exactly that, read. If you don't have time to read, you don't have the time or the tools to write, simple as that. Delta is very, very similar. If you don't have time to read, then you're not going to have time to do the rest of it. You're not going to have time to complete the course successfully. So, and in parallel to that, think about your students. Um, for example, um, if a student who is pre-intermediate level came to you and said they wanted to score seven in all the bands on my own, my guess is your recommendation from a pre-intermediate level would be to read widely, learn more words, write homework compositions, try and extend their understanding of grammar, and then start doing some exam papers some of the time to improve their exam technique, but interleaving that with learning more English itself. What occasionally happens is you get, you get students, and I get teachers on module one, who want to start and just want to do more and more exam papers. They don't want to do any of the knowledge building. And that's really, I mean, it's not an impossible route, but it's hard work and, and a lot less interesting and a lot less effective. Um, so 
I would join them with group work, use forums, and do all the things that push you to interact with other people. The old exam practice tasks will be effective, but only once you've got some knowledge. So only really if you're largely already Delta exam ready. So one thing to do is to read about learning um, and understand that a bit more as well. Um, I recommend reading, uh, for example, uh, one of my favorite books I've written last year, which is about this area, is called Make It Stick. I've put that on the slide, it's about to come up. If you can't access books very easily, um, the Learning Scientist book covers a lot of similar ground. And I've used pages um, of notes from um, this and other similar books on similar areas to put together some advice and self-study pages um, about different techniques and to give you examples of how I would do it if I was actually trying to work up to doing the exam in the near future. So there are examples there for you. Um, but the overall message from all of these books and people is the same. It's that if it's hard to do, it's having an effect, but if it comes easily, it probably isn't. You have to build new knowledge. You need to be doing something proactive with the knowledge. Um, retrieve it in a different way, space it, interleave it, use different media and methods. And you need to find ways of making yourself interact with the ideas, explaining to other people, talking about them. Um, the single least effective way of, of working on things is rereading, underlining, and instantly testing yourself. So there's a thing to be avoided. Anything else will be more useful. But also, that's when courses are useful. We give you ideas of places to look for sources and get you to do projects in groups. So that you have to do, um, you have to talk to other people. And yes, you also need to do exam practice. We get you to do individual exam practice every week. Um, sometimes just one or two tasks, occasionally a whole paper. And this is marked by a teacher who gives you some advice on what to study, where to look, what you're doing well, and what you seem not to have dealt with yet. So our approach overall is that you should be mixing up, acquiring knowledge, and then trying to use it. Much the same as the average community classroom, where you get them to do some speaking, but you also have time to when you're introducing new language. A lot of the time, you know what it is you need to do for all this. You just need to be taking your own advice. I created a, a terminology logbook for myself. Uh, I used Thornbury's A to Z. Um, I read it every morning while going to work, so it was useful for me. So my first tip for doing the Delta Module 1 would be to um, find some good books. Um, I remember my personal favourite was um, About Language by Scott Thornbury. It was very useful, it had lots of practice exercises and um, the exercises were very um, similar to the kind of things you had to do in the, in the test. People often feel overwhelmed by the amount of reading required. It is therefore very important uh, to identify the texts to read carefully and the ones to skim read. Um, and when reading, be uh, disciplined about taking efficient notes, which is certainly something that helped me. I thought you might like to hear from the people who've been doing it. Um, and you had Bilu and Dave and Bashak there from very varying times in the past, all of whom have done module one with us successfully. So I'm relying at this point on Joanne having extracted questions from the um, system so that uh, she knows who to call on. Are you in there somewhere, Joanne, or not? Yep. It was quite quiet. Um, Said Mohib, you had a question. Would you like to share your question with us? Um, hello. Yeah, my question was uh, there. Uh, I have uh, studied in online uh, Delta Module One of uh, ITI course, 
So there are ample of uh, um, plenty of resources in one specific area, for example, in this course or in Lexis or so. Is there any specific sequences which books? So shall we study first and then which one sh uh, we should study second and third, or all we should go to all the resources? That was the question. I think that's what I'm trying to say about combining increasing your knowledge and trying the task. So when you tried exam practice, tutors were written back and said, okay, well, you seem to be solid on the grammar, but read something about cohesion or read something about phonology. And that would help you work out what to read. I mean, if you're saying is there general advice for reading, I'd say read one of everything. Have a, a look at something on each system, look at something on each skill. But how or what you'll look at will depend on what you can access. If you're somewhere that has libraries and you can access books reasonably easily, that's great. If you're not, you'll need to use more of the online resources. But the, um, the projects and the exam tasks that we use in the course would help you to focus a bit on where you should be focusing, putting more of your effort, I would hope. Thank you. Can I ask a question, please, if it's possible? Go for it. Hi, it's Yasmin. Um, hello, everyone. Um, as a person who did the course um, on site, like at ITI, um, the, the thing that I found most challenging is how to deliver. So I've read a lot. A lot of books about English, uh, Scott Thornberry, um, how to teach uh, speaking, writing, and a, a, a wide range of books and articles uh, regards ELT. But how to deliver was something that I actually struggled a lot with. Um, this, this is what I mean about and developing practice right. tests. Yeah. Well. There are not enough practice tests out there for you to keep doing them endlessly. But what mm -hmm. we strongly, strongly recommend is joining in very actively on the course. I, I don't know which um, mood you were in, but some mood was we get good discussions going and people really start to talk back and forth about things. Someone will write up and say, look, I found this term, it says this in this book, but these two books say something different. Mm -hmm. And people talk it through and work it out. And it's by discussing things like that, either through forum or through projects, that you get more of a voice. It's ever so much like getting your students to start to speak. That thing about, as you say, mm -hmm. you can receptively understand mm -hmm. a lot but not necessarily have said it. It's saying it that helps you develop your voice. Oh. Um, can you put yourself on mute? Perhaps we can put you on mute. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Razi had a question. Yeah, uh, I want to ask you a question about actually the sets that you know, we are supposed to uh, actually prepare ourselves. Uh, do we need to study any source about testing and curriculum design? You find that you need a little mental? bit on testing and curriculum in module one, and then you need a lot of it in module three. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't really come from module two at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let me, I've, okay. now in the next part, I haven't called it module two, module three, because um, that module two, the key thing is the practical teaching, but you also have to write. And then for both module three, two and three, you have to be able to write. And the writing is a thing, and the teaching is a thing. So this shorter clip is about the teaching, and then there is no clip for writing. I need to do that one live. Okay, so in module two, you need to teach and be observed on a series of occasions. For assessed lessons, you will also need to prepare a background sound about the underlying theory of what you're teaching. Um, but you will also need a substantial lesson plan. And I'm thinking about the practical teaching in this section. The key to successful lessons is showing that something has changed in the, in the student's head as a result of 
the 50 minutes. Not that they've just had a good time or just practice something you can already do, but that something is different than what they're able to do or than what they understand. In order for you to demonstrate that that's the case, they have to be actively involved, not just passively listen. Uh, so while it's nice if they're also busy and entertained, uh, the learning outcomes become the most important thing. How can you prepare for this? Well, as I said in the general part, start observing others, get them to observe you, record yourself. Think about asking students about what they think about various things. The simplest thing you can do is, uh, at the end of the lesson, give them a slip of paper and ask them to write down three things they learned. Sometimes the results you get back can be surprising. If you can become more aware of what you're doing in the classroom, it will help. Start a teaching journal. Which lessons felt as though they went well? Why? Can you see patterns? Try and read one book for each skill, one for each system. For example, the How to Teach series is a good starting point for some areas. How to teach vocabulary, grammar, listening, phonology. There are more lists of books like this in that Weebly site. Try out some of the ideas you read about. Choose something you enjoy teaching. Try and design a lesson of your own for it. Can you come up with a theme, a context, tasks, free of practice? Try your ideas out on your students and share them with others. Start to collect activities and resources. Does your school have resource packs? What games or tasks do you use to practice a passive or time sequence link words? Are you collecting these things in a way that you can access them easily and quickly when you're trying to put lessons together for Delta? If you're teaching your own students, then they can be um, different kind of students. It, you can do all of these things with business people, with EAP, with ESP, with young learners. There are ways of making all the focuses work with different kinds of groups. If you do an intensive, you usually end up teaching general adult learners. One question that comes up a lot with this module is whether to try and do it part-time or intensively. You can come do it over six weeks in Istanbul. If you live in Istanbul, you can do it part-time here. Or if you live somewhere else, you can do it part-time online, but then you need a local mentor. None of these ways is the best way. They all have advantages and disadvantages, and some suit some people better than others. Doing it intensively means you concentrate on this and only this. Although people often forget that, and you really can do with some reminders. Hello, first of all, it's really intense. So make sure that you don't have anyone with you, like your kids or family. If you're alone, it will help you more. And besides that, I think you have to have some academic writing skills. If you don't, maybe you can read about them and write a couple of things before you come. Doing an intensive would also mean you should prepare more, a lot more. Some of you could be teaching the first diagnostic lesson on the second day of the course. So you need to arrive with ideas for lessons, ideas for things you might want to teach. We get into the middle ahead of time, so you can prepare some things, but you can't actually write assignments fully in advance. You have to wait till you meet the students, know what levels you have, and can coordinate with others on the course. But you can prepare a lot. Okay. Don't underestimate module one. Do it first, and then start module two. If you choose to do it part-time online, module two, you can teach your own students, and that can be a big advantage. But there are other things which make doing it online more complicated. For one thing, you will need to work with a local mentor, and you need to find them. Occasionally, in some places, we have people who are ex-Delta graduates who can help with that. But they need to be a person with Delta to have finished their Delta, um, or with the Trinity dip or an equivalent, a very practical equivalent. They also preferably should have a couple of years post data language teaching, not be a very new graduate, and even better, have a little bit of training experience. The best people, I mean, Delta teachers will be wonderful, but then you have a Delta center where you were, so you wouldn't have this problem. But if, if someone's 
a Celta tutor, which and you do find more of those about, then they're great. They're really easy for us to train. But someone with just local training experience and a Delta and some experience post-Delta can also be a local mentor. If you do it in this way, though, you will have to, uh, if you're lucky and you're working, for example, for a British council, quite often they will get your line manager to be a mentor and then you don't have to pay anyone anything. But if you're finding someone independent, you will have to come to a financial arrangement with them. Um, people usually want to do it because they're interested, they see it as uh, a useful thing on their own CV, but they're unlikely to do it for free. It does take time. The other thing about doing it in your own context is you will need to finance the travel of an assessor. Or, if I, it depends where you are, for example, we have had people do it this way in Tehran, and at the moment I'm afraid they can't get a census into Tehran, so then people have to come to Istanbul to do their external lesson. If you're in a place where I can get assessors to come and see you, um, and if life has got back to normal and people can fly about a little bit more, then um, you would have to cover the travel costs of an assessor coming to you. Uh, there are assessors in a variety of countries, but there aren't assessors in every country. Okay. Yeah, okay, so. I, there was a few questions, non specifically. Well, um, there were Mohammed Assem. You had a question about resources, I think. Yeah. Um, two. Um, uh, October. I can't hear you, Mohammed. I'm really sorry. Joanne, do you want to read Mohammed's question out yes. for him? Uh, Mohammed, you had a question about any suggested books or readings, resources specifically for module two. And Farnaz, Farzane also had a similar question. Mm. I think it's quite hard for module two because you really need different books for each assignment that you do, and you will do five or six all together. Um, but uh, sometimes those big edited collections are quite good. Jack Richards has a book called Issues in Language Teaching, where he has one chapter on each skill, one on methodology and a variety of different things. Uh, the Cambridge Guide to TESOL, which I think was Richards and somebody else, is similar. Again, a lot of different chapters on different skills and systems and elements of teaching. So buying an edited collection like that might help because it would mean you could use it in a lot of different assignments. Um, another thing that might help is thinking about subscribing to something like ELTJ, the English Language Teaching Journal, because you get access to quite a lot of um, back um, issues. And they, they could be useful, again, um, for a range of assignments. Um, but as to one book, I would say, why not invest in one very good reference grammar, either the Longman or the Cambridge or the Collins, because you're going to use it for the rest of your career. And it will help. And almost everyone does a grammar focused assignment. So it would help with one of them. Um, but it's just hard to recommend. If you're able to do things face-to-face, -face, if you come here, we have a good on-site library. I've spent years sucking it from second-hand bookshops. Oh, and that's another thing to think about. If you're looking for books, it is worth looking for second-hand online. It can make a huge difference in how much things cost. Any, any more questions? Um, Milad had a couple of questions. Milad? Hi everyone, uh, can you hear me? Yes, speak up though. Yeah, yeah, I just had one question about module one. Uh, as uh, it is mostly, uh, you know, focused in methodology, do you believe that we should also have a great, uh, I mean, as something like this and uh, linguistic background in order to start module one? I think having a, a linguistics background helps. Uh, although it depends what it is. On one of our more recent courses, we had someone with a very um, functional linguistic background who 
was finding it a bit puzzling because it cut things up in a slightly different way. But uh, the fact that you've worked through um, those kinds of analytical skills will certainly come in useful in the longer term. Um, and, and module one, I think, is a mix. You need, uh, although paper two is very focused on methodology, paper one is very much focused on language analysis. Um, uh, either authentic language analysis or analyzing what the students have achieved or output or analyzing what people would need to do things so um so yeah having a linguistic back it will almost certainly help anything elt or language based helps in some way anyone else thank you so much you we still had a question thank you in fact it's a technical question uh, there is a, a test for module one in the, uh, on December the second. Uh, if we finish, if we pass that exam, how long it will take to get the certificate? As you know, like our institutions ask for such questions, uh, that's why you should ask about them too. It takes ages because the procedures that <laughs> they go through are very rigorous. It takes ages for a good reason. You get your results in about the middle of February. And you will get, when that happens, uh, you get a notification which says this is not a certificate on it. But that is usually enough to make an institution happy. And the certificates come in shortly after that. But be assured that the reason it takes so many weeks is because of all the blind marking, double marking, reviewing, checking, and standardization that's going on behind the scenes. It's because they want their exam to be fully reliable and valid and all of those other things. Okay? Okay. Let's Only, uh, oh. Shall we move on and come back? Uh, sure, it doesn't matter. Pauline, go for it. Uh, thank you for the webinar and for the library. I've recently come across and used it. Uh, okay. And I actually have this book over here. It's huge, and I'm a little overwhelmed. Like, are there any Oh, but that's a very good general book. Whoever just asked about buying one book, um, that's one of Douglas Brown's. Mm -hmm. I can sometimes find secondhand online. And it, because it's got a chapter on everything, it won't be enough to uh, completely do the work. But it, it's a good starter place because it's a bit on everything. How's it go? How much of it have you read, Paulina? two chapters so far <laughs> let's be honest <laughs> that's fine that's great just go at it bit by bit that's the thing okay uh, um, yeah but my question was actually different uh, lots of friends of mine who passed delta model one mentioned later on that uh, they've been struggling to understand what examiners want to read like uh, it was mentioned earlier that answers might be different because uh, in some tasks it's kind of interpretation of your um, understanding of different fields and skills so um, they weren't able to understand what to do and what to write specifically i think if you have a good solid background in elt if you read that book and digest it and you talk to people in forums and you join them with projects you will find it manageable i think we hear that problem most often people who are trying to do things in a little bit of a hurry and they're trying to do the exam practice without having done the other bits and it becomes quite hard to express it well because you don't fully understand all the things you're trying to put into the answer if all you've ever read are sample answers from other old exam practices you don't have the network behind the understanding to take it apart and apply it to a new thing and i think that you're going about it the right way don't worry keep reading reading is definitely the key okay what about the best way to track the region then like making notes yeah maybe yeah. The challenge sharing if, if you go to the weebly so i would do that when i read i try and take short summary notes as i read because otherwise i just forget what i found where and i can't go back to it and it fades quite quickly so i yes systematic notes of some kind these days i find online notes are fabulous because then i can search through them when mm -hmm. i think i know 
there was something about, I don't know, generosity of academic, and I can look for the word generosity in my Google box will bring the book up that it was in. And that's a super way of doing it. Much more easier than it used to be. So I would strongly recommend notes and online notes at that. Thanks a lot. Okay, briefly, I'm going to just take, I only have a very short bit to say about module three. Yasmin, are you waving your notebook at us? <laughs> this, this is my baby. I have everything, you know, here. Okay, all the notes uh, in there, right? All okay. the notes, yeah, alternative approaches. Okay. And then I have phonology. And then I have books, notes here. The books that I read, I put it here. It's, it's a Fabulous. great approach. That sounds actually. very systematic. It's yeah. the doing of things. It's the proactive collecting and filtering it down and making notes and extracting the best of it for yourself. That's what will help it all stick in your head. Right. And it's I, funny, it helps you with interviews when you're actually looking for jobs. Okay. When they ask you questions, you instantly remember something from your notes. You say, oh, that's it. That's what I have to talk about oh, here. That's good to hear. <laughs> really rewarding. Okay. I have a short clip. This is only a minute from past people. Again, all these people you've seen in the little videos, they're all people who've done courses with us. But one message keeps coming through again and again, I hope. One very useful thing is to um, familiarize yourself with general kind of academic research skills. If you don't have so much experience writing essays and um, just dealing with general conventions of, uh, of all of that, it would be very useful to um, make yourself aware of it. Yeah, I would recommend that before you come to take Delta Module 2, you should have some kind of pre-reading on the, uh, uh, the four skills and also the four uh, systems. And you have to read a lot and to be ready with all the strategies that you may use in the classroom to teach these. Uh, one more thing that's also very important, uh, your academic writing skills. You have to work on this, you have to read a lot about this because it is, you know, it's, it's, it's extremely important. Good luck, John. Alright, so I highly recommend that you check links on Moodle, uh, the ones related to reading. And I'll do lots of reading before you come over and I will especially focus on strategies and skills, how to develop skills when it comes to reading, listening, writing. That might be your, your first point of reference or a good start. All talking about research skills and being able to write. And it's something that comes up for people on module two and three. Um, you need to be able to write and put your ideas across in a, an appropriately academic tone. And how to prepare for that, how to think about that, is probably the thing that's hardest to do on your own. And the best ideas I could come up with were, hang on a second, I lost my link. Uh, let me open it up and I will show you. Oops. Uh, because it is, uh, we are really hoping in the near future to launch something that would help um, with this a bit, a kind of pre-Delta system um, that would help with writing uh, academic skill, uh, academic writing skills. But meanwhile, why can I not see my PowerPoint slide? Who knows? Let's try again. There it is. The biggest single thing that will help is reading. I know I've gone on and on about it all through, but even if you've seen the people talking to you, you've seen that's what they recommend, this is what we recommend. You have to read for this to do Delta. But as you're reading, also notice how others write as you read. Don't just take it in, see what other people are doing. But you can also use some kind of self-teach, self-study blogs and websites. I found the um, UAFAP is very good, the um, Andy Gillett site on EAP. And even the BBC has some links that could help if you haven't had to do this kind of thing before. Use opportunities in your life now to write. Uh, join, in, join in with discussion lists, with forums, comment on people's blogs. Um, 
And if you've really never done this kind of writing before, if you attended a university where it was all multi-choice, have a go at things, work your way through something that is actually for students at this quite high level. Something, for example, there's a, one particular favorite of mine was the Access EAP Frameworks by Alderman Alexander. So it's harder to do on your own, I know, but that is before you do two or three. It's not such a problem in one. One is you can use shorter answers, the um, level of accuracy in your writing is less important in one. But in two and three, you have to be able to produce extended written assignments in an appropriate academic tone with some critical voice in it. You have to use resources, draw on them, and find a pathway through them. And if you haven't done any of that before, you definitely should think about preparing for it a bit before you get started. Have we got any final questions? We're now over time, I do realize. Nada, did you have a specific question about module three? Yes, hi. Um, maybe you could just give us an idea about module three. What is it like? Um, after hopefully passing my external now, I'm planning for module three, but I don't know. I know it's about an assignment, but like, what is it like? What, what are we expected to write about? And will we get like feedback similarly to module two? It's more independent than module two because you have to do a whole assignment. But the assignment breaks up, and it's quite big, it's four, four and a half thousand words. It breaks up into four chunks fairly naturally. You get feedback directly on each chunk one time and then on the whole thing one time. And we're very restricted on that. That's the Cambridge recommendations. We can't give more um, a feedback than, than Cambridge give guidelines on. Um, but you can use the forums a lot to get a lot more help and idea. And again, in the middle, we give um, guidelines, we give little video summaries, big written um, self-study notes that help you think about each section. You can use the forums to get um, a specific advice about something you're trying to do. Um, but it is a more self-directed module generally. Uh, mm -hmm. But you're, you're basically, you're just, if you do the classic rather than the management, most people do the classic. In the classic, then you are designing a course for someone. The course is not what's being assessed particularly. What's being assessed is um, your understanding of the area the students are in, your understanding of needs assessment and analysis, uh, your understanding of how you applied the principles of course design and assessment. So you do design the course, but the assignment itself is writing the rationales for mm -hmm. what steps you went through to achieve that. Okay. Thank you, Sally. You're welcome. Azar has a question, I think also about module three. Uh, yes. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Azar. Hello. Uh, hi. How are you? Thank you very much. I actually have a question uh, related to all modules of Delta. And I'm sorry, I know this webinar is only focused on Delta, but uh, you are the best one that I can find to answer this question of. Um, I have a PhD in TEFL and I am a full-time teacher at Bursa Technical University in preparatory school. Now, uh, is Delta a better option for me or should I go for a EDD or doctor uh, in education? Which one do you recommend? Which one will help me help my students better? It depends what you want. Um, uh, Delta is very practical. Um, mm -hmm. It's asking you to look at, module one is about the ideas, but then in module two, we're asking you to actually put those ideas into practice in your classroom. We have to work with somebody where somebody has to watch you teach. And mm -hmm. I'm sure there are wonderful, I'm really glad there are people out there doing their PhDs. I have friends who've done them or are doing them. But that's a whole different thing. That's about understanding a very tiny thing in a very intense way. And somebody has to do that, but that's not about, that won't necessarily change what you're doing in your classroom. Nobody ever has to watch you teach. You can do the whole exercise on paper. 
Um, so Delta is very much more about your everyday practice and having an impact, a direct impact on that. Great, great. Thank you very much for your answer. The other question for that is it does depend where you want to work. For example, a lot of um, European and British institutions and in Turkey value both the Masters and the Delta, but are aware of the difference between them. In some countries, you'll find that, in fact, they prefer paper qualifications and they don't. In Japan, I'm told, they are not interested in your Delta. They only want to know that you have at least a Masters. So it does depend a little bit where you intend to go on the work. Oh, exactly. I'm um, actually choosing Turkey and uh, in Bursa Technical University, they accepted my PhD in TEFL, so that was good. But then I want to improve in my job and now uh, they both accept Delta and a PhD in education. But I, mm, as you said, Delta is more practical. So uh, Delta will force you to look at what you are doing. Certainly module two for most people is a, tr a very sharply transitional time. People often go through a kind of breakdown while it's happening and then rebuilding while, and there can be some kind of, some, some crises in the middle of it occasionally, but usually they then go on to build bigger, better and stronger. It does force you to look at your practical teaching. Oh, amazing. And I will ask one uh, quick question and then um, I will just, I don't ask any more questions. Um, I'm uh, in my contract, I'm teaching 30 hours a week and I am also working on research paper I published with Taylor and Francis. So it's a kind of a full package of responsibilities. Should I wait for the summer to start uh, Delta or do you think yeah, I'm, I'm a hard worker? But we do usually run intensive now? versions of everything in the summer. I can see people in here did the intensive version of module one in the summer. Uh -huh. So um, that is one option. And for some that's people, different. I know that's the only way they can fit it in. Someone also had a question about intensive or um, the, the part-time Delta courses. Someone, yeah. are you here? Hi, John. Hi, Sally. Hello. Uh, it's nice to see you again. Uh, indeed, uh, I'm afraid I'll be uh, a little bit overwhelmed with time management. Uh, however, uh, indeed, I want to get great benefit from Delta Module 2. Uh, since we do have a lot, two or three hours a day to revision. So what's your suggestion? Uh, intensive or extensive Delta Module 2? Uh, they were different people find better. No, that um, not. I, I personally, if I had the option, I think I would choose to do it part time. But if you do it part time, you need um, students to teach. And as things stand, Cambridge still have not accepted virtual lessons for Delta. Um, I know they have for Delta, but they haven't for Delta. Um, okay. and so that may be a factor um, if you do it intensively know that when you do it you will do nothing else for that six week period um, you will eat breathe and dream Delta you will it will do not bring people with you do not it's extremely intense if you can do it part-time I would do it part-time um, but some people find they just can't make the time management work on top of work, even as I was saying exactly that just now. And then they choose, even one of our Delta tutors, uh, Marie, started on a part time course, failed to make it work part time twice, and eventually turned up on one of the intensive saying, This is the only way I'm ever going to get this done, and did it. <laughs> so, it depends on your approach to deadlines and time management, your lifestyle a bit. They both have advantages and disadvantages. Thank you. Thanks, indeed. Um, we have one more from Salwa, who's been waiting a while. Salwa? Salwa, Abdi? Hello? Hello? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. First of all, thanks, thanks a bunch for um, 
for Miss Sally. Thank you so much for your efforts and for the, um, all the information that you gave us during that uh, time. So thank you so much, and I want to thank you for that. Um, the, I have some questions actually. Uh, in my work, uh, they offer um, to give us um, CELTA trainer. And uh, I'm a CELTA holder actually. But the question here that they asked us, the first question is actually, they asked us to, we have to be a native speaker if we want to become CELTA trainer. This is the first question. Is it actually a pre Oh gosh, no, no. Huh? Well, some of my Delta tutors are not. Adam, who runs module one, is um, Czechoslovakian. We've got a Russian tutor. We've got a Turkish tutor. We've got, of course you don't. Why would okay. you need to be a native speaker? Most teachers in the world are not native speakers. So uh, can I know what are the, the pre-requirements for be, uh, to become a CELTA trainer? <laughs> um, well, you certainly need to have your Delta and a considerable amount of experience after it. You would then probably need to be living somewhere where there is a center who agreed to train you up because you have to work with the center. They can't just train you and send you on your way. You have to w work with the center for several courses after you've qualified. Um, mm -hmm. And okay. language, of course, you have to have... Um, a degree, your language has to be so good that there is no question about what level it is. You're not worrying about there being mistakes. About, yeah, yeah. you mean the language English proficiency level? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the second point that, uh, which is higher, CELTA, uh, CELTA qualification or um, master degree? They're different. That's what I was saying to Azza. Um, higher in what sense? If you look on the British Ofqual system, Delta is registered at level seven, but that doesn't, and so is a master's, but that doesn't make it a master's because it doesn't take you as long to do a Delta and there isn't as much writing involved. However, I have many past participants who would say, who would tell you, well, in one way, it's actually easier to do a master's because you just do that when studying books and it's just between you and the books. Whereas in Delta, someone is in your classroom. And I think for all of that, that is usually quite an uncomfortable feeling. Um, so higher in what sense? It depends who's hiring. If I were taking a language teacher, I'd want them to have Delta more than I would want them to have a master's. But um, that's, yeah. I'm, pro I'm probably biased. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, ladies uh, and gentlemen, the, the, I the get the impression thing. that you could I'm ask sorry, questions been... forever, but, 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 um, you can find my contact details on the ITI website, you can find more information about Delta on the ITI website, um, I really hope to see all of you soon, uh, I think it is the single, and many, many of my teachers would say the same, it is the single most productive, valuable, interesting thing you can do uh, to develop yourself, to do a Delta. But I would temper that by saying you need to have time and it takes a lot of effort. So don't leap in thinking it's going to be a quick do, but do leap in thinking it's going to change your ideas forever. Um, yes. But with that, I am going to love you and leave you because we are well over an hour here, okay? <laughs> Yeah. But thank, thank you, you ever so much. I hope some of that's been useful. As I understand it, we will soon share a link to the recording and the slides. Okay? Thank you. Thanks so, so much for your effort. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 thank you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.